Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malik. I'm an anchor reporter here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the CEO for a digital marketing firm. It's called The Shipyard, with clients including in and out Burger, Victoria's Secrets, and Nationwide Insurance. Let's say hi to Rick Mellenthal. Rick, good to have you with us. Thanks. Great to be here, Frank. Uh, my guess, with all the uncertainty and all the businesses closed right now, someone like yourself is probably busy or about to get very busy. Well, that's actually pretty insightful. Some would think we aren't, but you're absolutely right. We're actually very busy. Uh, our clients and, uh, and, and frankly, uh, folks around the country are very much searching on how they communicate now, how they engage now, how they market in what is a different world, uh, both in the media world and, of course, existentially and emotionally, how do they market today? And, and how do you offer advice when we still are in this period of uncertainty, when we, we don't know when we're getting to the other side, so to speak? That's well said, Frank. That's the biggest thing, right? We don't know really what's ahead. And I think we're grieving, really. You know, we're grieving also for the life we had only a few weeks ago. It's like a sudden death. And so what we feel personally, of course, business people feel in their businesses too. They are just trying to shake off what's happened here. Uh, they have spent a good deal of time just navigating the huge change. Unfortunately, for some businesses, they may be to sleep, really, if they're in the restaurant business or travel business. But many are still in business, and they need to first understand that grief, the grief that's going on for themselves and the grief that's going on for their customers. Embrace that, but then, as you said, figure out what am I going to do today? How am I going to navigate this today? What kind of advice? I know you've kind of condensed it down to a few steps people can take or businesses can take. Uh, what's step number one? Well, first, if you can be a humble hero, and you can't fake being a hero or a humble hero. Mm -hmm. You think about just what would I do if nobody was watching? What could I do to help? What could I do to be a part of the community? What could I do to touch people? Uh, I know Crocs is making shoes for healthcare workers. One of our clients, Waleda, is making uh, skin food for all those dry hands because of the sanitizers. So what could I do to be a hero and a humble hero and then to be able to touch people? Yeah. Second would be to be in uh, kind of what I'd call a pragmatic optimist. It's, there's a lot not to be optimistic about. And most of our information, of course, is, is killing our optimism, right? It's talking right. about some very serious things. But there's a lot going on. Families are having meal times together. People are connecting more than ever. Uh, if you could be a part of that and really understand that, um, you, you really can resonate. And third is to make that direct connection, connect directly. The fact is, is that right now, all media, there's more media engagement than ever. Television, mobile, laptop, streaming video, social, these news programs, they're all up 50, 70%, right? right. That is massive change. But of course, rates or what it takes to invest in this media is far lower because of what's going on in the business world. So if you have a product to sell today, or even if you're sort of on hiatus, but have the ability, I would lean in and I'd make that connection today because people are going to notice right now. People are engaged right now more than ever. I guess the bottom line is if you've got a product or a company and you're grieving too and your company is, you want to be part of the conversation, I guess, for the greater good. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of want to trust your instincts on that too, Frank. You need to think about humanity. And uh, great marketers are also very usually insightful humans. <laughs> and uh, um, a lot of work we do is the combination of data analytics and creativity. So what's really data analytics? What's data? It's understanding human complexity. You're complex, I'm complex, you're not just a reporter, you have many things going on, I do. The more you understand that, then there's all sorts of ways to sort of connect with you personally. But right now, I wouldn't send another communication 
to tell your audience uh, what's going on or how bad it is. I'm sure your email is full of these are unprecedented times and then another couple paragraphs about all that's going on. I think we're well aware of what's yeah. going on. That yeah. we're informed about. Touch me in a different way. I know a business has sent out uh, a playlist with 67 songs. Didn't sell anything, didn't move a product, just said, I know you're home. Right. In between everything you're doing, in between your virtual meetings and, and such, here's a little playlist to help your uh, family out. Well, how about, go, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, how about musicians like Chris Martin from Coldplay? Oh. You know, just jamming at home saying, I know you guys are. You're, you're missing my tour now, I'm missing it too, but here you go. A lot of them have really stepped up too. And that, and that know, keeps- I, I, got the, I have the feel, you're so right. And I wonder if you think this, I have the feeling that in the beginning, they were working sort of with handlers and many of the entertainers you saw were off tone, like do this program and right. sort of get, uh, uh, and get a lot of credit for it. And of course, people said, here are these wealthy people that, you know, what's their problem? But when they did what you said, when they sort of just opened their home, yeah. uh, uh, let me just jam. Oh, here's my, uh, my, my child. Here's my dog. Here's my, it went, it, you know, their legs were up. And, you know, didn't that change a lot? Oh, that yeah. actually was a plus because I've never really, oh, maybe I saw a video of their crib, you know, but I've never really seen them just be humans. And then the engagement was amazing. And that's what it is for marketers, too. What can you do to really tie into that humanity? Uh, part of that has happened to us as well. I'm here at my home with you, and I anchor the weekends. And then, you know, during the mornings on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, a lot of times I'm coming live from home, and your dog might come into the shot, or your child might, or what. It's real, and I think that's what people really need. Right. Yeah. And now, if I saw you in the studio, I wouldn't see that guitar back there. Nope. My guess is you're playing it a bit right now, uh, okay. just sort of relaxing with it. You'd have to tell me. I don't know that all your viewers know you play that guitar. I, uh, it, Not it, well, but, I might add, but I do play well. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> um, you know, I could see a picture back there. And so you're absolutely right. I think you're, we're gauging a little people's humanity. Right. I like the humble hero idea, too. My dry yeah. cleaner in the East Bay here in the Bay Area, uh, they called me and said, hey, Frank, we're doing free dry cleaning for all first responders and free dry cleaning for uh, any medical staff. We'll bring it in. We'll sterilize it. We have a way of getting rid of the virus. Um, any way you can get the word out. And, you know, that's kind of a one hand washes the other. They're staying, you know, relevant and yet healthy at the same time. So I, 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 that's absolutely right. And even businesses that we don't know about, but that are very significant businesses, like I have a client called CAS. They provide all of the scientific uh, information, chemical information to scientists and academics. They immediately did it all over the world. Very important. Wouldn't know about it. They immediately opened access to their academics, made it streamlined, cost effective because all of these folks are trying to search for a cure right now or a vaccine right now or so and that's what they did behind the scenes and they didn't really crow about it but that's the humble hero they were would companies be uh, wrong if they do nothing right now i mean you got to have a game plan because eventually this will end right yeah first if you can engage uh you need to engage second is you're right this will end uh but we're changed forever yeah. We're changed forever. So if you're a smart business, even a small business, uh, as certainly a significant, sophisticated business, you got some smart people around, got pretty good instincts. And so you need to now plan for what you think that change is. And use this time so you can plan. You're usually going to meeting to meeting. You never can plan or you're putting off. So use this time you can plan. My biggest advice, Frank, is don't define yourself by this crisis. Don't yes. define yourself on what you're going through now. Very difficult. If you have no customers and you, you, you just let go of most of your staff, oh my, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, you're wearing it. It's deep. Nobody Try wants to, to hear not it. define yeah. yourself. We can't control this virus. To, to, to come up with something we can't control, boy, this is it. Yeah. Try to then think about it. if you were a great business before this happened, you had customers, you had products, you were a vibrant business. Your customers love you, people love you, and you will be a great business again. Not sure how or when, 
uh, but you will believe in that and then start to plan for the future. It must be a challenge for you because marketing now has changed forever as well, right? Yeah, well, we're a collaborative business, creative business. So imagine first that usually we're sitting in a room with a whiteboard. And, and so first of all, just that's so different, right? And we try to recreate that virtually. Uh, second is the marketing world, as you know, the business world has changed. Our clients have a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of pain. And when they have pain, you, you have to feel that pain. And, and we have uh, uh, pain. And then, you know, we're, you, we're, we're smart people, but we're not profits. And, and uh, so you, you got to think about what the future is, but that takes a, you know, a good deal of work. I'm pretty tired at the end of the day. And uh, <laughs> even bet. though I'm not, I know, and you maybe are too. It, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're finding this, but our clients are. We're actually a lot more tired at the end of the day, yeah. even if we just worked at home and, you know, going home means walking out of whatever our home office. Well, we, there's this malaise that's this heaviness that's on all of us because you can't do what we used to do, you know, in our daily lives. We like routine and certainly our routine has been uh, kicked around a little bit. Let me ask you, I'll throw a couple of uh, businesses your way. What would you say, how will these industries kind of find their way back? And most of them involve, you know, people, uh, airlines. What would you do with them? Well, today, of course, uh, uh, they're, they're not able to be in business and such. What would I do today? Uh, most of it's planning for the future. That's a hard one, isn't it? But yeah. airlines will come back. We'll want to connect. Uh, we'll want to connect with people. Um, uh, so, uh, But today, they're doing the right thing. I actually think airlines are doing the right thing. They immediately uh, uh, allowed flexibility on cancellation. Uh, they communicated immediately. This is financially very tough for them. I don't have a lot of advice for airlines because I actually think most of the airlines did it smart. They moved right away. They pivoted. They accepted the pain. And, and I think customers are noticing. How about uh, uh, pro sports? How does that move forward? Bringing people side by side into venues, 10, 20,000 strong. Um, people are going to be a little increase, reticent. You've got to increase. Uh, you, you, you have to increase all of what is going to happen that's not live. Uh, while they're fairly proficient uh, in broadcast, uh, there's still a lot of work to do in order to connect with people uh, um, online um, and how I bring that uh, uh, sport to you. They're going to have to increase their revenue uh, uh, model uh, as it relates to that, and they're going to have to redesign, the, the redesign their physical uh, space uh, for, a, for a world that for many years will be thinking about germs and connections. They're going to have Absolutely. to look at their facilities. They're going to have to look at their bathrooms. They're going to have to look at all that. And my guess is they are, uh, but, but they should get really intense about that. And they will be, the ones that will do it will give, be given credit, right. credit for that. But that's what they have to do. How about, and how about the movie theater? Do we, do we still go in and see a movie? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I think it's going to be the movie theater that gives us some space. Some of them did that already with the way they uh, 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 built space. Um, uh, I absolutely think movie theaters will move forward. I don't have specific advice today for them. Yeah, well, anything where uh, a bunch of people all congregate together, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a brave new world, even you know, the way we shop, the way we do everything, uh, the way I work, I mean, from home. And I pity uh, the commercial real estate people because I've got a lot of friends that have leases that you know, aren't, don't have the money to pay the rent. Let alone, do we need all this brick and mortar space now that we've discovered that we're very proficient having people work from home? We're going to change our space considerably. We're lucky enough to be in a financial position that we can still do that. Uh, we have five more years on our lease, and we're actually going to change the entire thing. More collaboration space. You might not have an assigned desk. You might have things so you can work at home or there. It might be that we have less desks than we have people because we're going to expect remote uh, 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 working for a long time. Uh, you come to the office for collaboration. You come to the office uh, to build that. Uh, but there'll be a lot more work for home for many, many years. to come. And finally, Rick, why don't you just plug your business? Where are you located? And if people want to knock on your door, how do they do that? 
we're headquartered in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, have an office in Southern California. Uh, we bring data analytics and creativity together. As you said, we work with In-N-Out Burger, Scott's Miracle Grow, uh, American Electric Power down there in California, San Diego Gas and Electric, uh, Bole, a number of international companies, a number of European companies come into the state. But our key is you: how do you have data, data that can really drive content? So we're a bit blessed because that means we are very involved in what you call direct to consumer, that e-commerce business, and it happens to be a big part of our business. So well, our business is actually growing, but uh, but we're working with the pain that other businesses are dealing with today. Well, Rick, some uh, some great insight. I want to thank you so much for being with us. That's uh, Rick Mellenthal. He's our guest. He's the CEO of a digital marketing firm called The Shipyard, and he's a proud <laughs> Buckeye as well, I might add, aren't you? The Ohio State University. <laughs> Atta baby. All right, Rick, we'll uh, continue success, and thanks for chatting with us. Thank you, Greg.